What's up beautiful people and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bryce Chichiku and welcome. So I am super excited because someone had dropped a question on my last video and they asked, what are some books I recommend for this profession? Especially if you're new and you have no idea what to do. I think that is a great question and I've got a couple books that I do recommend that I think it's worth kind of watching. So definitely stick around and let's get into the video. So someone asked, what books do I recommend for the interior design profession? And I think this is a great question because one, you guys should never ever stop educating yourself. Even if you're like 30 years in the industry, years down the line, you should always keep educating yourself because things change so fast in this industry and just in life in general that it's so good to keep yourself educated. And if you don't keep getting educated on the things that are happening, understanding design on a different whole new level, if you don't keep doing that, you will never really grow as a designer. So I think you should always, always keep educating yourself no matter wherever, wherever you are in the industry. But these books are more of the base i would say things that core standards that i think people should have especially if you're not attending school for this and you're just kind of doing this on the side maybe you're helping a couple clients here and there maybe they're family or friends and you necessarily don't feel like you want to go to school to become an interior designer interior decorator but you still want to be able to do residential projects and do them pretty well there's some books that are out there to definitely help you though you don't have to be in school for it all right so one of the very first books that i do recommend is going to be more towards the business side of things is not necessarily the design part of things however this is i think if you're going to take anything out of this entire thing buy this book because especially if you're a person who have not attended school for design and you're just entering the profession you have no idea it is so 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 important you probably don't know this but you probably do because you guys are smart individuals but you guys probably know that it's so important to have a contract or an agreement of some sort with your clients so and if you don't know how to write that that could be you know it can seem like a bit of a hurdle or struggle for most people it would have been for me however i didn't have to write mine mind you that this is just kind of like a standard base um agreement that you could use as a freelancer, um, interior designer, whatever you might have, your creative. Um, just all you have to do is just tailor it to whatever you're working on. And it's pretty easy to do that because it's just an editable form. Um, but yeah, oh, I just smacked my face with that. But it is business and legal forms for interior designers. This is such a great book. I have used, I used the agreement forms from in here with my clients like every single one of them i make sign even your family and friends make them sign an agreement because you are a professional and professionals have agreements and you should have them sign it all right so there's now two other books that i'm going to recommend you can either get both of them totally up to you or you can get one of them i think you don't necessarily need two but if you really are like me, a little crazy, you want to know everything, I would recommend getting them both because they're very informative. However, you can look up a lot of the things are in this book online, but there's something great about being able to pull up a book and you know everything's going to be in that book you'll ever need. So in design, you're going to talk a little bit. You're going to see a lot of things about ergonomics. You're going to see things about, you know, um, clearance things like that are so important when you're designing like making sure you have adequate space between a wall and something that someone you know is going to be sitting on or a table of some sort so this first one is called human dimensions and interior space this one is so great because it really does break down um ergonomics of like, the human body of from like a child to an adult completely this is so great, especially if you're designing, um, like if you're gonna be designing furniture for your clients or you're designing a particular space, um, someone who, you know, who is of age and aging in place, people who have disabilities. It's important to know that you're making sure you're actually designing for the person who's going to be living there and doing it to the point where they're gonna be so happy you were in there. Sometimes if you're new and you didn't attend school or you, maybe forgot about it 
it's easy to miss certain things and making sure you like, you know, the right height for someone to grab on the wall. You know, a person who's on a wheelchair is gonna be different for a person, you know, who's who doesn't need a wheelchair. So it's important to all to know all those things, and these things make you a great designer. So if you need, um, if you're looking to expand your knowledge and you know, know all the technical and uh, you know, all the diagrams are so well done. I think I'm like spinning this book. I can't break this shit. Anyways, what my professor had um, done when we were in school, she had made us go through all the different chapters and mark out some of the more important ones that we would normally like, you know, quicker. Some of the things that we would normally use on a day-to-day -day design process. So, like seating, lounge seating and standard heights. I already have it taped. So if I'm really in a hurry and looking for the dimensions, um, the clearance, because I forgot what the clearance is for the cupboard to you know a person on an island, I don't know. Whatever the damn situation is I'm looking for, I already have it labeled so I could just quickly pull it up and I'm able to look at it. Um, so yeah, this book is so great. However, there is this book called Residential Interior Design, A Guide to Planning Spaces. So this one's a little bit, it's very similar to the Human Dimensions book. However, this one has a bit more, I wanna say actual interior design layouts in here. Um, you can't necessarily see it. So it has a little bit more interior design layouts inside of it and you can, it still shows you clearances for certain things, um, sample projects that you can actually look through and see how they put that together. Um, there's also, like, like I said, the dimensions, clearances that you might need to know are also in here, like things like the different sink sizes that you might need um, while you're designing your space. There's so much information in here. Like this is a dining room and you could see how much clearance is in between those rooms. That way you're able to apply to your own particular project. Project. So like I said, they're both great books. They do have different kinds of information, but also very similar information. If you're gonna, if I were to recommend one out of the other, I would actually maybe say this book because it has a bit more of real life scenarios in them. And they have, like, like I said, layouts in here and it helps you guide and plan the spaces a little bit better. That way it's very functional. Um, Cause you wanna make sure you're designing things that are actual functional for your clients. So I would say this over this. However, they're such great reads, not reads. I was not enjoying sipping coffee, drinking a glass of wine and saying, whoo, this is gonna be great. No, they're great reads reads in the sense that you get a lot out of them and I think like it's actually great books for you to apply towards your project however this one has information that is really you know it's great to know it's really really great to know however this has a little bit of what this has in here and a little bit more so I would say get this book first and if you're feeling a little bit fancy then you're gonna get this one as well like or get it later I don't know all right so this other book I'm gonna recommend I'm not gonna push it. I'm not gonna push it too much and say that you have to get this book. However, I personally, personally loved this book because I fell in love with rendering, like hand rendering, not digital. I love digital rendering, don't get me wrong, but I loved hand rendering and my um, instructor was at Humber made me fall in love with hand rendering and the things you can create with markers, create um, markers and paints, all these fun things and highlighter, the things that, the illusions you can create with just making a couple of strokes, I think was really incredible. And being able to do that eventually was a lovely experience and I hope to keep getting better at it. However, there is this book that I used throughout um, school. This is, we had to get this, but this is called Interior Design Illustrated. This is the second edition. You can tell it's a little bit beat up because I literally used this book every week after my second semester. I used it a lot. And that's because in this book, there is, oh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to show this to you guys. I'm just gonna open a page. So in these books, you can see a whole bunch of illustrations 
renderings you might say of interior design spaces and they have all the different strokes um it the reason why i loved this book not because of all the things in it but however if you actually read it it gives you information as to how you can kind of recreate it because it tells you everything that was used in that space so my recommendation for this book is for someone who is really looking to understand and learn a little bit more of hand rendering so let's say you, you might ask yourself like, okay, so why do I should care about the handwriting stuff? Like there's digital. However, there's this beauty of being able to showcase your ideas and thoughts to your clients right there on the spot, being able to draw it really quickly. Yes, you might not have your markers all with you, but sometimes you might. You might have a couple of things with you. You might be able to show your, show your clients what you're thinking. And being able to render is a great skill. It's a skill that is dying and that's, that's what we've been taught. <laughs> so not everyone is able to do it. However, if you're a person who wants to be able to get better at that skill or learn that skill, I think this is a great book to have. It does not give you a tutorial, like step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create it. However, just by even looking at the pictures, it tells you exactly what was used to create it. And also tells you the kinds of markers that was used in that um, space of the exact color. So you can go and buy the color from the art supply store. Um, example, I actually learned how to do beams from this book. I didn't know how to do beams while rendering, but they make it seem so much easier than the way I was doing it. Another book that I recommend, I do not have a physical copy with me because I am planning on buying this book, is Styled by Emily, is it Henderson or Anderson? I will insert all the information down below, but this book, I came across it and I thought it was absolutely great because she, what she's done is broken down different types of styles um, in the interior design and kind of helping you create those aesthetics and maybe helping you understand it in colors because there's so many things about interior design like you know how a color really affects a person's mood emotions whatever and you know certain setup or certain blend of colors does certain things to people so understanding that i think is really important to to be able to create a really nice, cohesive and well-designed space. So her book, Styled, I think is great from what I've seen. I have not fully read it yet because it is on my bucket list to buy. Um, but yes, I'll be purchasing that book. Another book that I also think is super and super important, going back to the business side of things, is the book that contains all the codes that is for your area. I don't have the book yet because that is a $200 I think purchase and I will be making that investment very soon. I am just saving up to, that's like a, a side expense, okay? Like that's an expense I don't need to have right now. However, it is on my list to buy next because I'm not attending into your design school because like I said, I just wanna focus solely on the residential spaces. I don't see myself necessarily doing a lot of commercial spaces. I have done it. However, I don't see myself doing more of it. Um, so in regards to the book of codes, I think it's important to actually know some of the codes a lot of the codes that you might be using in your day-to-day -day space, it'd, be, it'd suck to have to learn that the hard way that you can't do something, but knowing that you can't do certain things before you even get to the design process eliminates a lot of letdowns, like thinking you can create this you know, amazing thing and then you realize that the code does not permit for you to do that. For example, um, let's say you're designing an interior, uh, sorry, let's say you're designing in Canada or at least in Ontario, if you're designing a fireplace, you have to make sure there's a glass in front of it. If there's no glass in front of it, that's not permitted. I didn't know that until my teacher taught us that because that's part of the code. So there are little things that you don't realize you can and cannot do until someone's told you that. So having a book that has all the codes, it does get updated. So you might ha you would have to keep purchasing it after a couple of years. However, if you're a person who you're not going to school, especially you're not going to interior design school for it, so I'm really talking to my interior decorators out there. If you're not going to school for it, I still do recommend. I think it's a great buy and I will be making that purchase also very soon. Like I said, it's just a little expensive, but it's so well worth the money so that you can have all the codes that are potentially gonna cause you a headache in the future. You can flip through it. You can look at it before you make a final decision on something. 
it'll be a very smart, smart purchase. But yeah, so I have really talked about a whole lot of books in the spam of a, sh a couple minutes here. And I'm so sorry if this is like a lot of information. However, I do think all these books are great resources because I still refer to them after I left school, especially this guy right here. And especially this one because I am still, oh, I can't mess it up. I am still learning, rendering, hand rendering and making sure I'm still improving my skills. So I think those are really great books. And like I said, if you're gonna take anything out of this entire video, get this book. This is a book you need, especially if you're in Canada. Um, also in the States, if you're anywhere else in the world, double check that this meets the standards of, you know, wherever you are because you don't wanna, you know, put something that is not, double check it, make sure it suits wherever you're from, and I hope it really does, but this is a great resource. If it doesn't suit wherever you're from, I'm sure there is a book out there, very similar title, and something will pop up for you. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got something out of this. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're still here, but I will see you guys, all lovely people, in my next video.